Yuhei Wave and praise Yuhei Wave, Beit Noon Sophie, Yuhei Wave Royal Family, and welcome to our Power of Ten, where we utilize the Ten Step Scale for our daily Bible scriptural reading. Today is day six of month two in our holy Hebrew sacred solar year of 6,024 FC, which means from creation. I am Queen Vashti Atara Yishrael Vav Yahweh, and I will be presenting today's Bible study class. And today, we're going to be reading from the book of Romans, Romans chapter 6. And before we begin, we do want to begin with prayer. We want to ask our Father for guidance as we move through this Bible study. We want our Father, Yudhewapa's guidance as we move through our day. And we want his guidance as we serve him in every righteous royal way. We want his guidance in all that we do. And so we're going to begin with prayer. We can stand and face the east as we stretch forth our hands and say a prayer to our heavenly Father, Yudhi Wapni. Oh, Yudhi Wapni, Yahweh, God of our salvation, save us and gather us together and deliver us from the heathen so that we may give thanks unto your holy name and glory in your praise. Blessed be the holy name of you, Hei Yahweh, and you see rest, Allah, Lamed, Israel, forever. Oh, you, Hei Yahweh, let them be confounded that persecute us, but let not us be confounded. Let, let our enemies be, dis- be dismayed. <laughs> Excuse me. But let not us be dismayed. Bring upon our enemies the day of evil and destroy them with a double destruction. O oh, you day Wafe, forgive our fathers for breaking your laws, and please forgive us for breaking the laws. Help us to never bring shame upon thy great name, nor reproach against thy works. For surely, we have turned ourselves unto thee, O Yudhe trying to be upright. And as we confess our faults, please grant us protection against all of our faults, cleanse of our secret faults, and guide us unto the best of morals. For surely our prayers and our sacrifices, our lives and our deaths are all for thee. Oh, you may well pay. Now, the Lord's Prayer, Matthew 6, verses 9 to 13, in our native Hebrew tongue. Nephilim. Ave nu, sabasamayu, yikadash samerika, tabo maku terika, yesay razonka, kibasamayu came by Aris, et lekam kukenu, ten lanu hayo. Uslaklanu, al kata'inu, ki moshisokin, kamanakini, lakotiamanu, veal tevienu, the day ni sanyo, kim kaseinu, minhara, tulika, hamamlaha, ve ha gilla, ve a teferet, lil me, o ni sila. And he thanked thee, O Yuhei Wafe Yahweh, O living and eternal king, who has so mercifully restored our soul within us. So let everything that hath breath praise you, Jay Wafe. Praise you, Jay Wafe. Bait Noon Sophie, you, Jay Wafe. Again, welcome, Royal Family. Today is day six of month two. In the year 6024, we're going to be reading from the book of Romans. Now, we know, many of us know, that this Bible, this book of wisdom, has been written cryptically. Many hidden messages is what that means. Lots of codes and symbolism throughout the book. Lots of 
figurative language, you know, where a word may represent or resemble another word and is used to represent something different, figurative language throughout this book where you have to really know how to study it. It's written in at least nine different ways. And so because of that, we want to get it, the understanding that we can. So we utilize the 10-step scale, and we also read the introductions to the book. Now, there's 66 books in this King James Version of the Bible. And publishers oftentimes place introductions before each book to help you get that background knowledge that you may not have gotten on your own. And so today, I am going to read the introduction to the epistle of Paul, the apostle to the Romans. Sometimes just even reading the title at that introduction gives you some more history. Because when you just see Romans, you might just think that, this was by the Romans or something. But then you see it's an epistle of Paul. He wrote this letter and many of the letters that are in here, but they're all symbolic and representative of something else. Our father, Yudhe Wafe, Beit Nun Sophie Yudhe Wafe, taught us that this New Testament from which we're reading today, in fact, is in actuality representative of his good works, the good works of Yudhe Wafe, Dayton, and Sophie Yudhe Wafe. And so as we read this now, we read this with a different understanding on a higher level, a spiritual level. Yes, this was written many, many years ago, but it's pertinent to today. And also as we read from this New Testament, it's important to understand that this New Testament was written in Greek, all about the children of Israel, which is in the Old Testament, and all about our God, Yudhe all about the Son. And the Son's name is a Hebrew name, but this was written in Greek, so when they got to the son's name, they gave it a Greek name. But this son <clears throat> comes through the Hebrew lineage way back from, well, from the beginning, actually, but we can take it to our forefather, Abram, whose name was changed to Abraham, and then he had a son. One of his sons was Isaac. And then Isaac had a son. His son was Jacob. We know that Abram was Hebrew. Abraham was Hebrew. And we can go back and trace that. We did that in some previous classes. He's Hebrew. And so his seed would also be Hebrew. And so Abraham, then Isaac, then Jacob. And Jacob's name turned to Israel. And then he had 12 sons who are all Hebrew. Now, the so-called black man here in America is the tribe of Judah. And this all stems back from Noah. And he had three sons. And Judah is from the son Shem. Noah had Ham, Shem, and Peth. And Judah is the line of Shem, with the Shemites. And the, seed, the son comes through this same seed, the seed of David. And so Hebrew is all traced through down the whole line. So when you get to the, all the Old Testament, we're speaking about the children of Israel, the Hebrews, and our God, Yudhe Hebrew. But when you get to the New Testament, it's written in a different language, you see. The Old Testament used to be written in, was written in Hebrew. But the New Testament, which testifies to all those things in the Old Testament, 
and the son coming to remind us of who we are because we did forget because we broke the laws. But this is what I'm what I'm getting at is the lineage is Hebrew. So when you get to the New Testament, the writers, King James and the scholars that wrote this, they, they gave a different language, you know, to this. And they the Greek is the language for the New Testament. So the names have been changed from the Hebrew names is what I'm saying. So when you get to the name Jesus, you understand and you can research this, that is a Greek name. But the man that walked was Hebrew. He had a Hebrew name over 2,000 years ago. It was Yeshua, Yeshua ben Yosef, which is translated today, Yeshua, ben means son. <laughs> so Yeshua ben Yosef, and people call that name Joseph, Joseph today. So that's who um, this was about. But then our Father lets us know that it's truly about his story. It's just prophetic in a sense. Again, this, is, this Bible is written in so many different ways. So you'd have to be a religious scientist or someone that our Father has chosen to be able to receive and understand the true message. And so when I get to the name Jesus, when I'm reading here, you'll hear me put the right name back, Yahshua, then you'll say Yahshua, or you'll hear me place Yudhe Wave, Beit Nun Sophie Yudhe Wave here because I know that this is really prophetic and represents our father's story. Our father, this is all about him and his good works. So I just want to let the listener understand this so that when you hear us put the name back in of the original name, you understand why. You have to do the research. Okay? You have to do the research, and it's there. You can find out that that letter J for Jesus, and any of these names that begin with the J, for that matter, are very new because the letter J is one of the newest letters in the alphabet. It's less than 600 years old. And so common sense will let you know just for understanding the age of the letter J, six, less, than, less than 600 years old. But the man that walked was over 2,000 years ago. So we know from that alone he could not have walked in the Greek name Jesus, especially him being Hebrew. All right, so I'm going to read the introduction now to the epistle of Paul, the apostle to the Romans, all right, with the understanding that this is all about our father, Yudhe Beit with the Yudhe good works. All right. Romans, the, the epistle of Paul to the apostle, the, the apostle to the Romans. Occasion of the writing. This letter is the most powerful. Oh, I, I did forget. I'm going to read the introduction from an authorized version of the King James Version of the Bible that was made specifically for Hebrew Israelites by the Temple of Love Publishers out of Miami, Florida, many years ago. I'm reading from this particular Bible, the introduction in this particular Bible. And we know that other Bibles have introductions. You go on and read that and gain the information from that as well. It would be very helpful to your understanding. All right, I'm going to begin again. Occasion of the writing. This letter is the most powerful summary of the Christian message in the entire New Testament. For this reason, it stands first in the group of 13 epistles of Paul, even though Galatians and the two Thessalonian epistles had been written earlier. From Augustine in the 4th century to Martin Luther, John Wesley, and even Karl Barth in the 20th century, this letter of Paul to the Romans has been the occasion of a transforming experience of the grace of God, Yudhe Wase, in Yudhe Wase, Baton Sophie, Yudhe Wase, Christ, which brought about revival 
in the Christian world. Luther called it the chief book of the New Testament and the purest gospel. Near the end of Paul's third missionary journey, about A.D. 58, he was in Corinth preparing to take the offering from the Gentile churches of Greece and Macedonia to the poverty-stricken saints in Jerusalem. His thoughts were already turned toward the West, to the great capital city of the Roman Empire and to the westernmost country of his Mediterranean world, Spain. Paul intended to carry the gospel to Rome as soon as he could, make the offering to Jerusalem, and then set out for the capital city. He wrote this letter to prepare the way for his coming and to present the fullest account of his understanding of the Christian gospel to a church he had never seen. The letter was dictated by Paul to Tertius, that's chapter 16, verse 22, and probably carried by Phoebe, a deaconess of the church that is at Sancria, the eastern port of Corinth, as she made a journey to Rome, that's chapter 16, verse 1. Contents of the epistle. Moved by a deep longing to proclaim the gospel of salvation by grace, justification by faith in the atoning work of Christ the Messiah alone, Paul wrote the most complete statement of the Christian faith which we have among his letters. He showed that both They have the Jew, I'm going to say Hebrew, that both Hebrew and Gentile are condemned before God, you say, Wafi, because they have not obeyed the law of Scripture or the law written in the heart. That's chapter 2, verse 15. Since all have sinned, that's chapter 3, verse 23. There is no human righteousness which can avail with God, Yudhe Only the righteous act of God, Yudhe in giving his son, Yudhe Wafe, Beit Nun Sophit Yudhe Wafe, Christ the Messiah, provides a way of salvation. Human boasting is removed. And by faith in Christ, Yudhewafe, Beit Nun Sophie Yudhewafe, one is set free from the law of sin and death. That's chapters 5 to 8. Paul showed that Jews, Hebrews, must be saved by faith, even as Gentiles. He concluded the letter with a strong exhortation to offer one's life as a living sacrifice unto God, you, hey, wild, hey. Now here's the outline of the book of Romans. One, introduction. That's chapter 1, verse 1 through 17. Two, both Hebrew, they have Jew, Hebrew and Gentile under the wrath of God, Yudhi That's chapter 1, verse 18 through 3, verse 20. 3. Justification by faith in Christ, Yudhi Wafe, Beit and Sophie Yudhi Wafe. That's chapter 3, verse 21 through 4, verse 25. 4. Deliverance from the law of sin and death. This is chapter 5, verse 1 
through 8, verse 39, and this is also the chapter that we will be reading because we're reading chapter 6, Deliverance from the Law of Sin and Death. 5. The problem of Jewish unbelief. Again, we can also know that this is Hebrew unbelief. 6. Ethical exhortation. Well, the problem with the Jewish unbelief is chapters 9 to 11. Now, look, 6. Ethical exhortation. That's chapter 12, verse 1 through 15, verse 13. 7. Personal greetings and benediction. That's chapter 15, verse 14 through 16, verse 27. Romans has 16 chapters, 433 verses, and 9,447 words. And this concludes the reading of the introduction. And now, Royal Family, we're going to begin the reading of Romans chapter 6. I'm going to move into a different Bible. I'm going to move into the Hebrew Key Study Bible for this. I do that mainly because... The words here are a little larger, better for my eyes. All right. And this one is entitled Chapter 6, and this particular Bible, Dead to Sin. All right. Chapter 6, verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God, you dear wifey, forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Yudhewafe, Satan so feet Yudhewafe were baptized into his death? Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ the Messiah, Yudhewafe, Satan and Sophie Yudhewafe, was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, Yudhewafe, even so we also should walk in newness. For if we had been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Chapter 7. I'm sorry, verse 7. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God, Yudhewafe, Beit Nun Sophie, Yudhewafe. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God, Yudhewafe, through Yudhewafe, Beit Nun Sophie, Yudhewafe, our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust 
thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God, you, Hewafe, as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God, you, Hewafe. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. That was verse 14. Verse 15. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God, you may well say forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey his servants, ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin under death or of obedience under unto righteousness? But God, you, Hewafe, be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members, servants to uncleanness and to iniquity, unto iniquity, even so now yield your members, servants to righteousness, unto holiness. For when ye were the Servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. Verse 21. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? That for the end of these of those things is death. Verse 22. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, Yudhewate, ye have your fruit unto holiness and to the end everlasting life. Verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of of God, you Hewate, is eternal life through you Hewate, Beit Nun Sophie, you Hewate, Christ, the Messiah, our Lord. Praise you Hewate, praise you Hewate, Beit Nun Sophie, you Hewate. This completes the reading of Romans chapter 6. And now, royal family, we're going to move into the 10-step scale. Now, royal family, if you don't yet have this 10-step scale and you would like to have it, you can visit us at our website at www.yahweh144000.com. That's www.yahweh, spelled Y A H W E H one four four zero 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 dot com. Visit us there and there you will download the solar calendar. Now the solar calendar has all the daily scriptures on it as well. Our day does come in at sundown, solar time. The sun goes down, that's the beginning of our new day. So when you're reading our dates on the solar calendar, understand they come in at sundown. And so today being the sixth day, it came in last evening. 
And so we're still in the sixth day today. The scheduled reading for the sixth day of month two is Romans chapter six. Now, as you go through the calendar and get to the end, after all the months, there are 12 months of 30 days, and then there are five more days from sundown to sundown, completing 365 days. And at the end there is the 10-step scale. And so you can have it along with the daily scriptures. We certainly encourage you to download the calendar. Currently, we are in 6,024. Don't know when you're going to listen to this, but on the Gregorian calendar, it's 2021. But on our solar calendar, it is 6,024. Now, when you get that calendar, also browse the site with confidence. There are books there written by the Honorable Yudhe Wate, Bait Noon So See, Yudhe Wate. We are sure you're going to want to have these in your personal library. There are also books written by some of us who also have begun the process of studying our holy Hebrew name, and that was what he commanded us to do so that we, too, could write books. Also, Royal Family, we have also other products there. We have organic products. We have soaps. They're organically made. We have uh, Yahweh's Tree of Life, Yahweh organic products. We have the turpentine rub, which is a pain relief thing. We have elderberry syrup, help to build that immune system. We have skin creams, and we have hair creams that's really good for uh, growing your hair. All right? And all of these have been formulated by our family, Hebrew Israelites. All right. And also, Royal Family, we have another site that we would like for you to visit, and that site is www.universityofyahweh.org. Now, this site has been specially designed for parents and prospective teachers who want to teach their children from home. There is an online self-paced program that you would enroll in and you would go on and work through the modules at your pace. You'll get the support you need whenever you need it. And now, not just for parents and prospective teachers, if you are new to this information and knowledge and just want some structure as you move through the information you're gaining, this also would be very beneficial to you as well. All right? So we certainly invite you to visit us there as well. And now, Royal Family, If you are needing a spiritual home, if this information from our Father, Yudhe Wate, Beit Nusofi Yudhe Wate, is making sense to you, you love his messages, you enjoy these 10 step study classes, the power of 10, we invite you to join us. Let's work together as family. Just go to our site. Again, www.yahweh144000.com. And from there, you can email us. Let us know that you want to be a part of this wonderful movement and you want to join this great work. Also, Royal Family, in keeping with Malachi, chapter 3, verses 6 through 10, you can tithe with us. You can send in your donations, your financial gifts and support. This is how we move together as family. Everything we do here is for the building of our holy Hebrew nation, and we certainly invite you to join us. Welcome home. All right, all right, royal family, back to the 10-step scale. The first step on the scale is step one, and it reads, Bible, Wisdom, Proverbs 4, 7. This is the first line of defense, the Bible. Now, it says wisdom, Proverbs 4, 7, so let's go to the book of Proverbs. Let's go to 4, 7. Let's read more about this wisdom. And it reads, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom and with all thy getting, get understanding. So here it is, you see. You've got to get the wisdom. It is the principal thing. And with that getting of the wisdom, 
from the book of wisdom, get understanding. That is so very important because what good is it really to have a, the book of wisdom and not understand it? You see, you will still make some very serious mistakes without the understanding, and that brings on the curses. When you don't obey the laws of God, you may well be because you don't understand it. The law still has an effect. It still works the same. And so it's important. That's our story. The so-called black man here in America, our story in the Old Testament, we kept the laws and we were blessed. However, when we disobeyed, we were cursed and greatly so. Deuteronomy 28, <laughs> you know, 1 through 14 shows our lessons when we follow the law. But guess what? From 15 all the way to 68, that's the curses. We experienced it. <clears throat> and we are here as an example for the world to see how you will be cursed when you don't know. You've forgotten. That's been our story. Forgot the laws. Didn't know how to read it. New language. We didn't understand it. But anyway, you got to get that understanding. And that's very important. And so part A of step one is to locate and select the scripture in the King James Version, the KJV. So royal family, take a look and see which Bible are you reading from. Is it the King James Version? Because the King James Version is perfect for this study. This 10-step scale was designed to specifically go hand-in-hand hand with the King James Version, the KJV. So we certainly encourage it. If you're not reading from the King James Version for this particular study, you do. Okay, so you locate and select your scripture. We've done that. So the scripture that we're going to study and analyze more closely comes is Romans Chapter 6, verse 13, Romans 6, 13. We're going to reread that in a moment, but let's move into step two to find out what we're going to do once we do read the scripture. Step two says decode, English translation of words with concordance. Old Testament words were originally written in Hebrew, so we'd end up in the Hebrew dictionary if we were in the Old Testament for our reading. And there'd be an upright number associated with the word of study. Today, however, we're reading from Romans, which is in the New Testament. And as we said earlier, the New Testament was originally written in Greek. And so in this concordance, we're going to end up in the Greek dictionary once we get our word and that italicized number that goes along with it. It'll take us to the back of the concordance into the Greek dictionary. All right. So we did choose a word, but... What we're going to have to do is decode. That's important. This is an English word that we're going to give. The word that we're going to say today is the word dead. Dead. And that was throughout the scriptures here, the word dead and death. But we're going to take a look at this dead. And we're going to take it to the concordance in a moment to find out the true meaning of this. Because it may not mean exactly what most people think it means. There's more to it. And this is what the understanding that we're going to need. So let's go back and read the scripture from Romans chapter 6, verse 13. And it reads, Is that the scripture that I have? Hold on. <clears throat> That's, oh, yeah, yes, it is. I was looking at the wrong chapter. Okay. Chapter 6, verse 13. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourself unto God. Use hey what hey as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God, you take wildly. All right, so this is the scripture that we're going to take a closer look at. 
So now we take that word dead, and we're going to go into the concordance. Now, the concordance is a very large reference tool, one of the instruments that we're going to use for righteous purposes. And you take that word dead, and you'll have to find it in the concordance. All the words in the Bible are in the concordance. And those words are alphabetically noted in the concordance, in the first part of the concordance. And so we'll have to go to the D and find the word dead. Now, when you get in the concordance and you do find the word dead, you're going to find a lot of entries. I believe it was pages of entries of the word dead. So what do you do? Well, you'll have to find the word dead for the particular scripture that we're studying. So scroll through all of those entries, all through the Old Testament entries, scroll through all the New Testament entries until you get to Romans 6.13. You'll see the scripture noted right next to the, um, the word that you're studying. You'll find the scripture and you'll look for Romans 6.13. Now, Romans will be abbreviated. So find the abbreviated version for Romans and find 6.13. That's the scripture that we're studying. And now scroll over to the right a little bit, and you should see an italicized number there. That italicized number reminds you that you're going into the Greek section, the dictionary in the back. Be careful, because it is very easy to take your number and with all your excitement to find out what it is, run into the wrong dictionary. There are two dictionaries back there. There's the Hebrew Chaldee Dictionary. Well, the Old Testament words, those are upright numbers. And then you have your Greek words in the Greek dictionary with the italicized numbers. So be careful. Now, if you do this correctly, I'm coming from the strong, exhaustive concordance. I know there are other publishers out there. But in the strong, exhaustive concordance, the italicized number is 3498. Most likely, in your concordance, you'll have that same number. And then you will record the information when you go to the back. These numbers are numerically ordered. So you'll find 3498 in the Greek English Dictionary in the back, which is behind the Hebrew Chaldee Dictionary. And then you'll find this number. And here's where I remember to pray and ask our Father to give me the information that he needs me to have because sometimes there's a lot of information. Sometimes there's not. But you write down what you get, what you gathered for your study. I thought it was very interesting that the name for dead is the Greek word nekros, spelled N-E-K-R-O-S. And it had another one next to it, Nikas, N-E-K-U-S. And you might be laughing along with me because this word is a Greek word. It's necros, but if you, it's very close to the word that we used to call ourselves, necros. You change that K in the middle to a G and you have negros. <laughs> oh, did they know what they were doing? Of course they did when they decided to call us Negroes, and uh, the word next to it, N-E-K-U-S, Nickers. <laughs> well, you know, that sounds like Nickers to me, Nickers, you know? So, and it's interesting because the word is dead. Yeah, we were dead. That really was the right name in the, in the sense that they would give us because we had no knowledge of who we were, no understanding that we were Hebrews. No understanding of our God, our language, our native tongue of Hebrew. We were dead to all that. Why? Because we broke the laws of our father, Yudei Wazi. That's why we were carried away uh, to a strange land and sold into bondage. Jeremiah thirteen nineteen happened to us. But when we return, no longer are we Nikos, Nikas, colored. Black, African-American, Afro-American, 
all the other proverbs and bywords that were ascribed to us because we broke the laws of our Father, you he was it. But anyway, back to necros and necos. <laughs> it means a corpse. That's what it says here in 3498, a corpse, dead, literally or figuratively, dead. You see, literally or figuratively. You can physically be dead or figuratively dead. You know, figuratively, you know, that's that, you know, the word that expresses one thing but really denotes something different. Figurative language, how this whole Bible is written in figurative language, you know, metaphors, similes, parables, and on it goes, prose, and, you know, there's so many ways, metaphors, proverbs, which we were called, nikas, negroes, parables, personification. This Bible is written in so many ways. So this is figurative language when we speak about dead. These dead people we're speaking about walk with a dead mindset of who they are. That's why that word necros was given. All right, that's what I got from step number two. Let's move into step number three. Step three says, gather additional original information. Pursue roots and other Hebrew Greek words numerically denoted as the definition indicates. Now, normally right here, you will find other roots, and the definition may also give you several numbers to pursue. But for this particular word, mikros, 3498, the Greek word, there were no other words associated or numbers associated to pursue. So in this case, we just move right through step to step number four, okay? And step number four says, consult the lexicon for greater latitude on original information. The numbers are identical to concordance numbers. And so here's where you need lexicons now to add to your personal library along with the concordance and the King James Bible. The lexicon, there are two of them. There's one for the Old Testament. That's the Hebrew child lexicon. And then there's the Greek-English lexicon for the New Testament. And that's the one they're going to use. Now, there are many publishers that publish lexicons. So whichever ones you get your hands on, just make sure it's the lexicon for your King James Version of the Bible. I use the Justinius for the Old Testament. G-E-S-E-N-I-U-S, apostrophe, the Jusinius lexicon. And for the Greek, I use the Thayer's, C-H-A-Y-E-R, apostrophe S, Greek English lexicon. But there are others out there. You can just go to Amazon. You'll find them. And just, But you do need them for this study. This is step number four. We don't want to skip any of these steps unless there's nothing there for us to pursue, like step three just now. All right, but step four, your lexicon is important because you're going to now go for greater latitude on this original information that we got. All right, so now we're going to go to the lexicon for that same italicized number, 3498, in your Greek lexicon. Be careful. Make sure you're in the right book because you'll get the wrong information. All right, so 3498 in the Greek lexicon, there was a lot of information here. I pulled out some of it. You can always go back and see what I didn't pull out, but I pulled out what I thought was necessary for our understanding today, and I pulled out the word dead, one that has breathed his last, lifeless, as if already dead, sure to die, destined inevitably to die. Then it says, the return of the dead to life. So there you see, there is a return. You can have a return to life. That's when you return to the what? Tree of life. That's the divine mind of yud heh wah Beit Nun Sofit Yud Heh We have been eating from the tree of good and evil. 
That's the tree that leads to destruction. That's the tree that leads to death, physically and spiritually. Eating from that tree, that fruit is tainted with evil. And so if that evil will operate within you because it's tainted, makes you sick in the mind, sick in the body, eating the wrong foods, not eating the foods that our Father prescribes for us for good health. Some people ask, well, why can't I eat pork? Well, you can eat it, but you're, 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 you're commanded not to, not to eat the swine. Why? Well, that swine has over 999 known worms and diseases. So why would you want to put something that has that many worms and diseases in your system? It's going to destroy your good look. It's going to destroy your systems within. I saw a video where uh, they put the pork out and left it out and put some, I think she put Pepsi-Cola, Coca-Cola, some kind of soda on it. And within seconds or minutes, the worms came out of there. Go to YouTube. You might be able to find it. Put in worms coming out of, you know, meat (laughs) with Pepsi-Cola or something. I'm sure you'll find it. It was absolutely horrible. These worms were not just little teeny worms. They were big, popping out of the meat. It was gross. But this is the food that some people eat that will destroy you. Yeah, you do have a choice. You can eat whatever you want to eat. That's the choice that we've been given. That's why we're different from insects that have instinct. They just do what is already recorded in them to do. But we have been given choice and free will. And But we've been told that we should only eat from the tree of life. But when Eve, the nation of Eve, was tempted by Lucifer, and then she came and she brought it to us, Adam, male and female, Genesis 5, 2, we were put to sleep because, you know, we, you know, we had an operation to pull out and make the Evites a weaker vessel that couldn't protect the law. But because we were still sleeping from that state of that operation, we were woke, awakened, we were tempted and we did eat. We weren't able to discern anymore yet until the Messiah comes back. And so we ate. And so from that tree of good and evil, we became sick in the mind, making wrong choices. And, but this tree is only to last for the 6,000 years, and then it begins to self-destruct. Our father told us that that. Satan was given a sentence after Cain killed his brother of 6,000 years to rule to prove that he could do well. A mark was placed on him for protection. Mark of law, but it has been removed. And in the 6,000 year, we're in 6,024. So his his kingdom, we see, is beginning to self-destruct. Going to happen. And so we can return from the dead mindset into life through the tree of life, the divine mind of Ethiopia. That's where I was going with that. And then it says destitute of life. See, when you eat from that tree, you become destitute of life, the knowledge from our Father's divine mind. You don't get that anymore. He removed it from your view. It's still there, but you just can't see it. Your mind, your eyes have been shut to it. And all you see is good and evil, and you just kind of love it. We did. We enjoyed eating from it, even though it was destroying us. People enjoy pork chops and things like that. But it's still going to destroy you. High blood pressure, low blood pressure, gout, all kinds of bumps and things you're going to get from there because those are the diseases and the worms that are in it. That's why we don't eat it. And there's a reason for why he chose for us to eat what we eat, but when you're destitute of the life, when you're destitute of the knowledge from our Father, you don't know that. You make the wrong decisions. You don't have the understanding, so you continue in the ways. And it's destitute of life. It says spiritually dead. There it is. Spiritually dead. See? You don't have an understanding of your true God. You say, why? So you're spiritually dead when you don't have that. Destitute of life, it says, that recognizes and is devoted to God. We 
you know, that's Yahweh. See, so when you're destitute of life, you are not going to be devoted to our father, Yudhe Wabi, because you don't know him. You don't know his ways. You don't understand how to know. Okay, it says, really what it says is destitute of life that recognizes and is devoted to God, Yudhe Wabi, because given up to trespasses and sins. That's what happened. We've been given up to the trespasses and the sins, and that's why we're destitute of the life, the knowledge that we need to live, the tree of life. It says inactive as a people, our people, so-called black man of America, destitute of life, inactive as a nation, don't even know the nation that they are should really be a part of. We want to be a part of the nation of God, Yudhewate, his nation, his nature. And it's inactive as respects of doing right. See, we're not doing the right things. We're inactive when it comes down to right when we are dead. Destitute of force or power. Don't have the force and the power, you see, because he says when you believe on him, Yudhewate, Beit Nun Sophie, Yudhewate, when you believe on him and you receive him, then he gives you power to become the sons of God, Yudhewate. But if you don't believe on him because you don't know him, you haven't Study him. He is the word. You're not studying these words, John 1 and 1, studying the word. He is the word. You don't study the word using his methodology. You're not going to gain the power from the word. Inactive, it says. Inoperative. You know, you're not operating out of the tree of life. You're inactive in respect in regard to the tree of life. Powerless, it says, and fruitless. See, you know, you don't have the fruits from the tree of life. That's the fruitless where you're fruitless at. You don't have the right fruit. You're eating the wrong thing, the wrong words. You don't know how to study. You don't have the understanding when you're dead. Now, when you come alive, you gain this. We were from the dead moving now into life. This is what I gathered from step four, the lexicon. So now we're ready to move into step number five. So if you find Hebrew and or Greek definitions of the original words selected in step one by use of the dictionaries. More than one dictionary we need to approach this divine mind. She told us that. So now we're going to move into the dictionaries. So you see the instruments that we're using? You see the tools that we're using? so that we can gain the knowledge and the understanding that we need so that we can move into the tree of life. We need dictionaries. The dictionary he taught us is the book of understanding. All right, so now we're going to be able to define one of these words. You can define as many as you have time for. For the sake of time on this class, we're going to define one of the words from the word dead. We're going to choose the word destitute. Okay, so destitute comes from dead. And then we're going to go to the American Heritage. And destitute says, utterly lacking. Lacking. Devoid. Lacking resources or the means of subsistence. Completely impoverished or to abandon. See, we've abandoned the knowledge. We've abandoned our father by eating from the, by choosing to eat from the tree of good and evil. We abandoned the tree of life, and so therefore we were abandoned, and we became lacking and devoid. Devoid of what? Devoid of the knowledge of our father. 
lacking the knowledge and understanding, lacking the resources. See, we have the resources now. We have the tools of study. We have the methodology. We have the 10-step scale. We have these. Those of you that are listening in, you know how to not be lacking. If you don't have all of your resources, you know how to get them now. And I suggest that you do get them. You don't want to be lacking in resources and completely impoverished. You know, let's go, let's take a look really quickly. Let's go to Hosea 4 6. Because when I see the word lacking, it reminds me of the scripture Hosea 4 and 6. Let's go there. This is in the Old Testament and it reads, verse 6 My people are destroyed for lack. Is that word lacking? My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee that thou shalt be no priest to me seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, Yudhe I will also forget thy children. You see, children of Israel, this is what happened to us, tribe of Judah. We're lacking, lacking in the knowledge of Yudhe So he rejects us because we rejected him. We have to come back into the law, the knowledge of the law and the understanding of the law so that we're not lacking because lacking causes us to not be able to, to be who we really are. When we're lacking, we don't have the information. Now, our father, Yude Wate, Satan and Sophie, Yude Wate, taught us that we are Judah. Showed us how. We went through the lineage and everything. And Judah is chosen to be righteous rulers forever. First Chronicles 28 and 4. But how can we be the rulers righteously when we don't know it? We don't know our name. We don't know our God. We don't know the original language. We don't know anything about ourselves because we were brought over here, carried away, and given another nationality that wasn't really ours, given another language, given another God, given another name to worship as God. And so we're lacking because of it. So let's go to the Merriam Webster's. The word is destitute. Let's go there. It says abandoned again, deprived, lacking possessions and resources. The greatest possession to have is the name of our Father, Yudhewate, and that was taken away from us when we decided to disobey the laws of Yudhe Wafe, and we were punished for it. So we're showing the world what it's like to be punished by God, Yudhe Wafe. Please don't do it. Please keep the laws of Yudhe Wafe as you learn them. Keep them. They're here to tell you we've already gone through the punishment. Didn't feel good at all. So the, 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 the thing that we want you to understand is keeping of the law. That's important because without that, it says, Suffering, extreme poverty. Not just poverty, but extreme poverty. Suffering. We went through this because we broke the law. We suffered extreme poverty. Our people, when you look at us on the bottom, extreme poverty. But it's time to wake up now and understand that we're lacking the knowledge. It couldn't be the knowledge that we gained in our uh, public schools and private education outside of the, UK, the nation of Yudhe Wabe. Because had we had the correct knowledge, we wouldn't be lacking. Why are we still lacking? Because we didn't have it, we didn't accept it, we rejected it. That's why. Or else we should all be walking around wealthy in all things. Not just financially, educationally, spiritually, socially, politically. We should be economically. Those are the five power structures. We should be wealthy in all. 
And if you want to know how to be wealthy in all those power structures, then you should order the book on our site, From Poverty to Riches, by the Honorable Yudhe Wafe, Fate News of Fate, Yudhe Wafe. We have it on the site. So now we don't have to be lacking. If you're lacking in any one of these structures, you're still in poverty because you're still in poverty in another structure that you haven't worked in. So we've got to be wealthy in all areas. Our Father is the perfect example. He shows you all the power structures and how he did it. And this is the blueprint for us that we're following. All right, so we don't want to be destitute. We don't want to be abandoned anymore. We don't want to lack in possessions the possession of the knowledge that we need. We don't want to be lacking in resources. We don't want to stop to suffer any more extreme poverty. Just go to the random house for destitute. It says, without any means of subsistence. So you can't even take care of yourself. No means. Of, you've got to rely on other people to do that. Everything, we're relying on other nations to help us. But our Father can give us everything. We won't be lacking. We won't be deprived. It's deprived or lacking. We won't be. When you connect, when we connect to his divine mind and take on the teachings and then apply them to our lives, we will no longer be destitute, no longer dead spiritually. Okay, let's move into step number six, and it says consult several dictionaries, which we have done, Compare, include Bible dictionary and Bible interpreter's dictionaries. Okay, so we've looked at several dictionaries. Let's look at the Bible dictionary. There are many publishers publish, publish Bible dictionaries. I'm going to use the Vines. There are many of them. There's the interpreter dictionary of the Bible as well. That's a, several volumes right there. I'm going to go into the Vines. When I do go into the Vines expository dictionary of Bible words, I go to the index in the back first. I take the number that we're studying, which is the italicized number, Greek 3498, and I go into the Greek dictionary in the Greek index in the back of the vines to find out what am I going to be looking, what's the word of of study. Oh, I did find it, and I think it did lead me to the word dead, and it does say it is necros. And what it does in the vines is it gives you several examples of the meaning of dead, and it gives you several scriptures and different kinds of meanings of dead. And um, it gives you, if you want, if this, it gives you for the spiritually dead, it gives you Ephesians 2, verse 1 and 5. For spiritually dead, it gives you Colossians 2, 13. And Revelations 3, 1 it describes the spiritually dead. You can go ahead and read those on your own for the sake of time. I did look at them. And that's pretty much what I got. There's, there's a lot of information in there. But what I was just more importantly looking at was anything that was letting us know that this dead also means that you could still be walking around, but you're spiritually dead. And so those were the scriptures that it gave for that. I'm going to move into step number seven. And it says define Hebrew and Greek definitions of the original word or words selected in step one by use of the synonym finder. All right, so we're going to take that word. The word was dead, but we moved into destitute. You could look up either one of them, but I like to look up the word that we um, we read off to that came from the original word so we can get some more flavor there. And so I'm going to go into the synonym finder. And J.I. Rodell is a synonym finder that I use. However, you know there are many publishers of synonym finders. You can even use online sources. You can even pull in your thesaurus right here because we are looking for synonyms right now for the word destitute, and I pulled out quite a few, but there's still quite a few left. And I pulled out poverty-stricken, impoverished, penurious, P-E-N-U-R-I-O-U-S, penurious, beggar-red, poor, needy, bad off, badly off, distressed. Strapped, hard up, financially embarrassed, out of cash, short, broke, dead broke. See how they use the word dead broke? It's not to mean that you're dead, but you just don't have any money. 
dead broke. Not just broke, but dead broke. Ruined. Wiped out. Overdrawn. This is from destitute, from dead. In the red. Down and out. Devoid. Deprived. Deficient. Lacking. Again, lacking in the knowledge of our Father. Helpless. Make you helpless. Stranded. Unprotected. See, when you don't have the knowledge from the tree of life, when you don't run into this strong tower, the divine mind of you, they walk for protection, you are now unprotected. And you're out there for all the ways of Satan. And he takes a hold of your mind and has you in the tree of good and evil, which is total destruction and death. You're unprotected until you run, run quickly, because that tree is on its way down. You have got to get out of there. Unless you enjoy what you're doing and you think it's all right and it's going to remain there forever. It is not. You can read through this Bible. That is coming down. There was given a time. Good will prevail and triumph over evil. Light will always be the one in charge. Darkness will always submit to the light. Turn the light on and see what happens to darkness. <laughs> it didn't really go anywhere. It just submitted to the light. This is why we have to keep the light on. All right, so lacking, helpless, stranded, unprotected, like we said, unprovided. See, the tools were not provided for you. You didn't know the proper tools to get this job done. Been looking everywhere to get to heaven, and heaven is right here. The word is right here. You have to study it. Second Timothy 2.15, I say that often. It's all about study. Don't look on a physical highway. Don't look on a physical highway. This is the highway. This study is that highway that connects you straight to the divine mind, the word of God, Yudhe It says unsupplied. Well, now you're being supplied. You're being given the information that you need so that you can supply yourself accordingly with the proper instruments of righteousness. It says when you are destitute, naked. See, you don't have protection. You're naked. Vulnerable. You're vulnerable to the ways of the tree of good and evil. Every lust and ungodly imagination is there for you. You think it's all wonderful, but it's death. We've got to take it to a spiritual level. To God, you can walk in. He's the one that shares with us how to live eternally in the kingdom of God you hear about it, in his dome, his realm of righteousness. All right, this is what I got from the Sendum Finder. We're going to move on to the special note that comes right before step eight. He says, always ask yourself the question, is this study beneficial to me? If the answer is yes, Continue on. If the answer is anything but yes, discontinue and start on something that will be beneficial. So here's where you get to assess your studies, evaluate. Are you getting a message here? Are you understanding that this dead doesn't mean a dead body in the ground that's going to raise up the sick body that was in the ground? It's going to raise up now. This is the death of the mindset. We were destroyed in the mind. Yes, we were free when in uh, 1865 physically, we were physically set free, but the shackles had not been removed off of our minds. We were 
still eating and bound to the tree of good and evil until the Messiah comes to redeem you from this sinful behavior, redeem you from sin. He took all of it on himself and died so that we could have the life. We were shackled until we understand this. So we are now being resurrected from this dead mindset that stems from eating from the incorrect tree. So, yes, this information is beneficial. I'm understanding we're speaking about a spiritual death as well. Very important to understand that because everything begins in the mind. Got to get that mind right so that you can lift yourself up out of the filth from the tree of good and evil. So, yes, beneficial. So we're going to move on to step number eight. We turn to the original scripture in the Bible and read it with a new understanding. See, now we should be able to go back to the scripture that we were reading and analyzing and read it with a new understanding. So let's go back to Romans chapter 6, verse 13, and let's read it with new understanding. It says, Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. So in other words, we're not going to take our minds, our bodies, and keep them in the tree of good and evil. These are our members. You know, our body has members within ourselves. And so we're not going to utilize ourselves now as a tool, an instrument, for unrighteousness, a tool for Satan, so that he can carry out his wicked plan. His time is up, so we're not going to be able to do that. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but, see, here's the word but, yield yourselves unto God, you, hey, what, hey, as those that are alive from the dead. See, we were there. We were we were dead spiritually. So now we are alive from it with this information, this knowledge. And your members are instruments of righteousness unto God, you Tewapi. Now as a people, as a body, we can now serve righteously our Father, you Tewapi. We were only put here to serve him. That's our only purpose. You may want to say, Satan and Sophie, you may want to say, came and let us know. Your only purpose for being here is to serve him. So we have to wake up to this understanding that we are here to serve him. Those of us that are here alive spiritually today were once spiritually dead. We had Hosea 4 and 6 operating in us, which we read. Rejecting the knowledge of God, you may want to say, is Dangerous. It's death and destruction is the result. Without Yudhewase, as a people, we are impoverished. We're distressed. We're financially embarrassed, unprotected, deficient, and lacking. Lacking in understanding as to who we are. We are gods and goddesses. We are lacking in the knowledge of our culture as Hebrew Israelites. We're, we're lacking in the understanding of our native language, Hebrew, and who our God, Yudhe is. This is what we're lacking in. However, when we begin to return to our Father, Yudhe pick up our tools, our instruments to study the word and rightly divide the word of truth, when we return to his divine mind and yield ourselves to his teachings, we become instruments of his righteousness. Hallelujah. Praise you, Hewase. 
praise you, hey, wape, bait, no, so feet, you, hey, wape. Hallelujah is a Hebrew term. Did you know when you said hallelujah, you're saying all praises be to you, hey, wape. Praise you, hey, wape. Let's move into step number nine, royal family. Step number nine says, search the scriptures. That's John 5, 39. Look for helpful cross-references in several Bibles. Track the codes of the new found information. All right, let's turn. Well, this is showing us that we need to have, first of all, a Bible that does have cross-references. Okay, so that's step number nine. So see if your Bible has cross-references. We know that there are publishers out there that do um, publish Bibles without them. But for this particular study, you want to keep the pattern and you want to follow it correctly. You don't want to build your temple, your tabernacle, in your own mind. You don't want to be lopsided. You don't want to be able to blow with the wind. You want to be able to go through every single one of these steps. Follow the pattern. So you need cross-references. So let's take a look. Just take a look at 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. This is one of the course references. And a lot of times, most times, when you do get course references, you're able to read that scripture with more understanding than you would have if you than if you would not have done the study. So let's go to First Peter two and twenty four. And it reads Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we, being dead to sin, should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. So so we were dead, and our father, Yudhiwafe, Satan Sophia Yudhiwafe, took on those sins so that we could live. Okay? And this is why how we were redeemed through our Father. Now, right here, what's interesting in this particular scripture, and here's another truth for today that we'll get and rightly pull out. It says that um, he came and he was on the tree. You know, not on the cross. He was on the tree being dead. See, they, they depict Christ. Uh, on pictures, you see him all over the place where he was on the cross. But in actuality, the man that walked over 2,000 some years ago was was on a tree, hung on a tree. You know how they how they lynch people and they put them on a tree like that and hang them? Well, he was on a tree. So where they got the cross from, I don't know, Chris Cross, and I don't know where they, you know, where that happened from, but this is right here. In your New Testament, it tells you right here. All right, so there's so many things to pull out and study. And you've got the proper tools now. Hopefully, if you don't have them all, you're going to get your tools. All right, so um, that's the course reference right there. And you see that, you know, he came for us. And see, he's giving us all the things we need so that we can, you know, come to him and serve him in righteousness. Okay, we've been healed because of it. And those of you that are listening in for the first time or new, you understand that this information that is coming, is coming from the teachings of Yudhewate, that you so see Yudhewate. He came to do this for us. And you can do the same. All right, we're going to move into step number 10. It says, keep an open mind. Use any given tools. You know what? I, I, I apologize. I'm going to go back for a second to step nine. I'm going to open up the line because there might be one other scripture. I know we're running past time here, but I'm going to open the line up to ask you, Queen, do you have an additional scripture for us that you can read for us about um, this dead that we are, or do we can, need to continue on? Well, we have uh, John 5, 24 and 25. Let's read that. Three and Let's go to John. Down. Let me get there, John. Hold on. John 5, what is it now? 24 and 25. Hold on, I'm almost there. I'd like to read along with you. Mm-hmm. 
All right, Queen, would you begin that? I have it highlighted here. <laughs> Go ahead, um, yes. <laughs> yes, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall come not or shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, Yudhiwave, Beitun, Sophie, Yudhiwave, and they that hear shall live. Praise Yudhiwave. That is powerful. Royal family, I'm glad that the line was open to hear that. Do you see? It is all about the word, hearing his word and believing on him that sent him. You're going to have everlasting life. It's all about his word, and we will pass from death. That mindset, that dead, spiritually dead mindset, now you hear, you believe on him, his word. And this is the hour. It is now, royal family, that you are hearing the words. Those that were spiritually dead, I was spiritually dead. We were all spiritually dead. We're not ashamed that we were dead. We had to go through this death because we did break the law. There's punishment for breaking the law. There's consequences for breaking the law. We were made spiritually dead, but he sent his son, Yuhewate, Baton Sophie, Yuhewate, that is now causing us to hear and be alive and live. This is what it's all about. Hold up, Queen, for sharing that scripture. Now we can move on to step number 10. We're, 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 we're doing it right through the Bible. You know, this, is, this, is, this is nothing from a, This is our Father guiding us to what we need. This is all about our Father, not about any one of us. We're just vessels that have allowed ourselves to be utilized for his purpose. All right, step 10, keep an open mind. That is what we want to do. We want to keep. We want to preserve. We want to guard. We want to protect this open mind now because we're on the path. We're on the course. We have discovered the way. Well, our Father has revealed it to us. Okay, we want to be able to now enter in, access, reach, attain the information because we have moved all the clutter out. We can't bring anything from the tree of good and evil with us as we enter into the divine mind of Yudhiwate. So make sure there are no obstructions, no clutter, so that you can get the message and understand it, receive it, hear it well, receive it, apply what you've learned. Okay, you can use any given tool these are the tools. These are the instruments. At any given time, if necessary, what we have demonstrated to you today through these tools, these are the tools that we need. This is it, royal family. This is what we're needing. What are you looking for? Here it is. Use any of them at any given time. Sometimes you have a word that you still don't quite understand, even though you've looked it up. Well, go to your ascendant finder. Go to the source. Get more information. Get some synonyms of that word and go look that up. Go back to the dictionary and look those up. Get the clarity. Get the understanding. It is important. Your life depends on it. Let you hear what they got you. That is the key. His guidance is what you need. What better guide than the word? John 101. What better guide? There is no better guide. So ask the best to lead you to the message that you need for the day so that you can get through that day with his guidance. You hey wafe, bait no so you hey wafe comes in the volume of the book. This book is in capital letter. We're talking about the volume of the Bible. He's in there. That's Hebrews chapter ten, verse seven. That's Psalm forty, verse seven. And that is so good to know that he's in this book. That means no matter what book, there's 66 books in here. No matter which book you're reading from, he is in there. No matter what chapter you selected today, whether you're reading the scheduled readings from, you know, our Father that's on our solar calendar, the scheduled daily readings, 
or whether he's moved you to read a different chapter. It doesn't matter. He's still in that word. It doesn't matter which verse you decide to narrow it down to. He's in the verse. Why? Because he is the word. That's John 1 and 1. I say it all the time. I hope that you take a look and you can uh, see it for yourself. But that word became flesh. So, you know, you can't be upset when you understand that it's going to become flesh. Well, you say, well, it already happened. Well, you mean that God is limited? It can't happen again? You have to become the word, too. When you study, you have to apply this. You're in the flesh. Take it on for yourself. Live it. This is how we're alive. Because we take the word, we receive it, we believe it, and then we become it. We've got a pattern after what he did. So, of course, it's going to become flesh. So don't be upset about that. And if you have a problem that is flesh, you know, he always said, close your eyes and just listen to the message then. <laughs> it's still going to become a part of you. We can prove that. You've been eating from the tree of good and evil. And everything that you've been doing, he says, is wicked. You became the word, but the wicked part. So what do we have to do now? We've got to live the righteous part. That's the part that dominates. So we've got to become the word, those righteous attributes. All right, royal family, I certainly hope that this demonstration of the 10-step scale has been beneficial to you. Hopefully you have gained the message today, and we have to become spiritually alive. We are from the dead, yes. We were that. We were neck close and everything. But we're not that anymore. Praise you, Hey Wafe. Praise you, Hey Wafe. Bait me so feet, you, Hey Wafe. We are Hebrew Israelites. Praise you, Hey Wafe. All right, royal family. We're going to end this with prayer. I'm going to ask King Yismaya if you will lead us in prayer this very early morning. Yes, ma'am. Praise you, Wabi. And praise you, Wabi. Bake no so feet, you, Wabi. Okay, royal family, let us stand and face the east with a hand spread from whence we came. Take a lot. Avenu, Sabasamayim, Yikadas. Samarika, Tarvo, Ma, Kuteka, Yarse, Rizonka, Kabasamayim, Kambaret, Elikim, Kukanu, Tainlanu, Hayum, Uslaklanu, Al Katarin, Kimok Solakim, Gamanaknu, Lago Tenlanu, Vel, Tevenu, Liade, Nisayum, Kim, Kathenu, Mehara, Kiloka, Hamanlaha, Baha Gibara, Baha Teperet, Leolame, Olamim, Selah. And we thank thee, O Heavenly Father, Yerewabe, our eternal and everlasting King, who has so mercifully restored our souls within us. And let everything that has breath praise Yerewabe, and praise Yerewabe, Beit Nun Sofit Yerewabe, the Messiah, Selah. Praise Yerewabe, and praise Yerewabe, Beit Nun Sofit Yerewabe. Yes, sir, and that is what we will do. We will praise you, Yerewabe. And praise you, hey, wav, hey, Zayt noon, so feet, you, hey, wav, hey, royal family. Have a glorious day. And you, hey, wav, hey, I love you, royal family. Shalom, uvraka, and that means peace and blessings. Shalom, royal family. Mm-hmm.